We'll start section 2.2 by taking a look at how to display qualitative data. There are five ways in which we will talk about how to display qualitative data. A pie chart, bar chart, Pareto chart, side-by-side -side bar graph, and a stacked bar graph. Obviously, the side-by-side -side and stacked have to do with two or more distributions as opposed to the others, which would display just one distribution at a time. For all of these questions, we are going to look at the housing types data. It is found in the Chapter 2 data spreadsheet, which should be linked and easy for you to find. The first display we want to look at is a pie chart. You might also know it as a circle graph. It's really the same thing. Essentially, it is a great visual way to determine how the different items of a variable could be split up. For instance, here we're looking at housing types for students in a statistics class, and the choices were apartment, dorm, house, or sorority or frat house. And we can see the way in which we had to calculate those values was essentially to find the relative frequency, which we've been working on already, taking the value divided by the total number, and essentially taking that value times 360. So where does 360 come from? Because the circle is 360 degrees. So by doing that, we get whatever angle measure, which is the central angle measure, which means for instance, for an apartment, the angle of, sorry, the measure of this angle is 147 degrees. So obviously we're not going to make these by hand. We're going to let Excel do this for us. But if you wanted to get out a compass and protractor and make yourself a circle graph or pie chart, you definitely could do that. Um, for the sake of this class, you will just need to understand how to find the central angle measure, um, which is to find the relative frequency and take it times 360. Keep in mind that those values should add up to 360 or very, very close. Again, sometimes there are errors with rounding. If I want to use Excel to create my pie chart, all I have to do is select the data. Notice I'm just in the housing types data in that chapter two um, data spreadsheet. If I go to insert, Excel makes it nice and easy because they have little previews. I can always click on recommended charts, but here I know I want to create a pie graph or a pie chart, and I just want a 2D pie chart. And notice it's given me almost everything that I want. I would obviously change my title. So housing types of stats students. And then I already have a legend down here, which is nice. And we can include data labels. So if I add data labels, Notice it's giving me the 20, the 15, the 9, and the 5. And perhaps I want to see a percentage instead, a relative frequency. So I can uh, choose percentage and get rid of value. And that should be everything I need on this pie chart. Again, there's always things that you can do. If you're ever unsure, most of the time you can find it here under Add Chart Element. There's also quite often a quick layout option that will have a title and labels and percentages and so on, and you can feel free to experiment with those as well. A bar graph is another great visual dis display for qualitative data. And in this one, you'll notice a lot of people get confused between a bar graph and a histogram because they look very similar. In a bar graph, you should see the categories, because obviously it's for categorical or qualitative data. You should see the, the categories along typically the horizontal axis as we have here. And the bars should not be touching. That is very important. Now, instead of actually doing this by hand, I'm going to show you again how to do this in Excel. In Excel, I'm simply going to select the same data I had selected previously. I'm still going to the Insert tab. Now, instead of choosing the pie or donut chart, I'm choosing the column or bar chart. I'm going to choose that very first option, which is a 2D clustered column. And if you'll notice, it looks similar to the graph I showed you on the last page. 
I'm going to change the title to housing for stats students. If you'll notice, I do have labels for each bar and I do have a numbered frequency on the left hand side. However, I don't have access titles. So I'm just going to click on this plus and click on access titles and notice it's given me now a generic access title. So this is going to be housing option and this is going to be frequency. And if I click on one of these bars, I'm going to click vary colors by point just because I don't want them all to look the same. And now I have pretty much everything I need. Now, of course, I can always add the data labels as I did before. Typically for a bar graph like this, we're not going to include those data labels. A Pareto chart is another type of chart. It's not used often. The only difference between a Pareto chart and a typical bar graph is just that it's arranged from greatest frequency to least frequency. So the one that we actually created was a Pareto chart. Um, so all I'm doing is just basically pasting that picture again, and we're not going to make that in Excel since we already just learned how to do that. A side-by-side -side bar graph, again, this one and the next graph that we look at are both used for comparing differences in data sets. So this one in particular is great if you're going to compare the differences for the same variables from two different groups. So I'm looking at two groups of students and seeing what the type of housing is that they chose. So let's take a look at how to do this in Excel. If I select all of my data, go to insert, that same choice I had before, 2D column. If you'll notice, but just by simply adding up above my first sample, sample A and sample B, it's given that title to those items. If you'll notice, it already has a title, which obviously I can change as I did before. It has the scale. Um, what it doesn't have is the axis labels. So again, I can just choose axis titles and then edit those titles as necessary. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you in case you're asked to use a specific measure on your scale. If you just double click on it here, if you'll notice it goes from zero to 30 and the major axis goes by fives. Let's say I needed to go by threes instead. I replaced it with a three and then it goes by threes instead. So you can see that there are many options for this as well. I didn't change those titles, but obviously you would do that for your own display. The last type of display I want to speak with you about for qualitative data is a stacked bar graph. There's actually more than one type of stacked bar graph, but a stacked bar graph is great, again, for comparing two different distributions or three or however many that you have. Um, it also is a great way of comparing the totals of the same variables because as I can see, on the apartment, the total is about 33, but I can also see that from sample A, there's 20, which leaves about 13 for sample B. Again, I'm just going to select the same data that I had selected before and insert, and I'm still choosing that first icon, uh, but now instead of this clustered, I'm choosing stacked. Now, on the last slide, I said there's more than one stacked. So this is the other stacked column. This shows uh, as a percentage of the whole. So that's definitely something that you might look into as well. Um, it's a great way to compare percentages based on options. But we're going to go ahead and create just this one, which does not give relative or percentages. It just gives whole values. Again, everything else is the same. I'm still going to choose those axis titles, change the title, change the scale if necessary, and give each axis an appropriate title. Now that we have explored ways to display our qualitative data, let's take a look at quantitative data.